on your shoulders Here with the world on your We can make a change We can plant a seed Right now For a better world For a better place wide open It's time for change Every drop in the ocean It's time for change We make a resolution It is time for change Dziękujemy bardzo. Zagraliśmy dla Państwa piosenkę, która się nazywa Resolution Song i jest e, projektem Music Declares Emergency, organizacji, która jest grupą artystów i przedstawicieli branży muzycznej, e, która powstała w 2019 roku w Wielkiej Brytanii e, i od początku swojego istnienia już zrzesza tysiące muzyków i 
miała 10 oddziałów do tej pory, ale na mapie tych oddziałów nie było Polski i postanowiłyśmy to zmienić i dzisiaj właśnie w tym miejscu otwieramy polski oddział organizacji Music Declares Emergency. Faye Milton, która jest jedną z założycielek oddziału brytyjskiego, ponieważ jest na innej konferencji, ale też minimalizujemy ślad węglowy, więc tam, gdzie możemy nie pojechać, tam nagrywamy filmiki i jesteśmy wirtualnie, więc fajna grała też wiadomość, w której opowiada o organizacji Music Declares Emergency, więc wprowadzimy Państwa w ten temat za pomocą właśnie, czy z, z pomocą raczej Fai Milton, która jest działaczką, ale też oczywiście jest wspaniałą muzyczką, jest perkusistką zespołu Savages, który na pewno Państwo znacie. Hello and greetings from Music Declares Emergency in the UK. So Music Declares Emergency set up in 2019 with the goal of bringing music into the fight against climate change. And that means using music's huge cultural influence, whether that's artists, music itself or the music industry and helping use that influence to shift public opinion towards wanting urgent climate action. Science tells us that urgent climate action is absolutely 100% needed, but the media can obviously um, delay that message and obscure that message. So we're trying to work with music and the music industry to get clear science-based messaging out there to the public. So we have three major functions. We work with artists, helping artists to speak out. Um, we provide an artist training in the UK. So it's media training to help artists speak out in a way that won't firstly damage their career or secondly, um, ways which will be really, really productive and constructive, positive messages to inspire people with messaging that's really, really based in um, expertise. So we work with some partners on that. We also have a campaign that's pretty new called Fan Club for Climate. And that's um, an opportunity to bring music fans who care about the planet together to form communities, both in real life and online, and to help guide and direct those people to really effective, impactful climate actions. So we're talking about things like registering to vote and switching your bank um, more so than things like using a plastic reusable water bottle etc um, because people in the UK already do those things quite a lot. Um, we also work with the music industry, we help catalyse change so we're working with numerous numerous partners across the UK music industry and overseas to help push climate initiatives forward, to help create connections between different organisations and to really create that space for music and the music industry to have a movement within the climate movement. So our main campaign that people may have heard of is called No Music on a Dead Planet. That's a slogan that's been used by hundreds and thousands of artists across the world now, um, right through from huge artists like Billie Eilish and Radiohead through to grassroots artists in countries like Benin, this amazing group called Star Feminine Band in Benin has joined the campaign and across, um, yeah, I'd love to say across the world, it's in many, many countries in the world, we're growing bit by bit. We now have organizations in nine countries across four different continents. So we've got groups in, Music Declares Emergency groups in the UK, obviously. Um, Canada, Chile, uh, the USA, France, Germany, Poland, the new group we're joining um, today, and also the Netherlands, Switzerland, it's always hard to remember the whole list, but Portugal as well. Um, there's new groups popping up all the time. So if you're watching this and you're not from Poland or, or one of the territories I've mentioned and you want to set up a Music Declares Emergency group, that's absolutely fine. We all operate separately, but together we have, um, uh, every group is governed independently, but we all share a website and share a declaration. So we have over 7,000 people having signed our declaration now, um, 
and those signatories are from all the different groups over the world. So it's one declaration for the whole world, um, but groups are organised separately in different countries to take action that is really specific and suited to um, their territory. So some of the favourite projects we've done so far, obviously the No Music on a Dead Planet campaign has been brilliant because it's been supported by so many artists. We have t-shirts that we um, have produced and the idea of the t-shirts, they say No Music on a Dead Planet on them and we have lots of different styles. We have a classic design, we've got a design created by uh, Jamie Reed, who did the original Sex Pistols artwork. We've got a design that's created in the form of the Unknown Pleasures Joy Division artwork um, that was created by the original artist of that artwork as well. Um, we've got loads of designs. We've got a reggae design. We've got an uh, Afrofuturist design. We've got a whole load of different um, designs that represent different music communities. Um, and the idea of the t-shirts is that you wear, you'd usually wear, say, a Metallica shirt to show the world that you love Metallica. And I guess the idea is that you want someone to see you and think, oh, okay, that person likes Metallica. Maybe they start up a conversation. They, um, you know, they, they know that you've got something in common. We're doing that with climate. So that's the idea of the t-shirt, that you can walk around with this really awesome design, but share to the world in a, a, a relatively subtle but powerful way that you're thinking about climate issues. I think this is really important because people don't spend a lot of time talking to their peers about climate issues. 82% of people in the UK, and I think it's around 72% globally, want urgent climate action, but we're just not talking about it. So we don't tend to know that our neighbours are thinking the same thing or someone who's on the other side of the world is thinking the same thing. So it's really creating that community around climate messaging and music. Um, we've done all sorts of other projects. We've been at festivals over the summer. We've uh, been there with stalls, with messaging. We've got this beautiful film that we show on big festival screens. Um, we've also worked with choirs up and down the UK to do a really beautiful project. project singing Louis Armstrong's What a Wonderful World. That was incredibly beautiful. Um, you can see a little bit more about our projects on www.musicdeclares.net and that's where you'll find the Polish website as well. So we've got all of our groups have um, separate pages for their information there and you can find the flag in the corner to see what's going on in your territory. So significant pushbacks. Um, we found that the UK music industry is incredibly welcoming to our movement. Um, we had when we launched, we had the major labels and the indie labels and tons and tons and tons of artists signed up pre-launch to launch with us. It was a very popular project, um, and we're really lucky that it went really well. It really struck a chord with people. I think the main issue that people find is that artists can feel like they're out on a limb um, if they're speaking out on climate. They're worried because they tour and they fly around a lot. They're producing plastic products like vinyls and CDs um, and merch, obviously. T-shirts can be very polluting. Ours are done in a very sustainable way. But all of these things make artists feel a bit anxious to speak out. So one of our biggest hurdles is to try and convey the message that we're all part of this big system. None of us are perfect. All of our jobs are polluting in some way. Um, all of our lives are polluting in some way. Music and live music is a beautiful thing that we all want. I think we all missed it tremendously in the pandemic. So it's not an artist's fault alone that they've got this sort of big touring footprint. And it's not really a fault at all. If you think about an artist traveling to see their fans in different places, it's a lot more efficient than all of those fans traveling all over the world to see their favorite artists. It's really the most efficient way of doing that. And I think we can all agree we do want live music. It's what makes life beautiful and joyful and, um, and yeah, really special. So that's probably the biggest challenge is communicating that. It's not it's not always easy to communicate so many different things in one go. Um, one of the reasons we have the No Music on a Dead Planet campaign is that it's a big banner under which you can say 
all sorts of things, lots of different campaigns come under that. So it's really a, an umbrella banner that we've invited groups in, um, also other groups outside of Media Declares Emergency. Um, one example of that is Green Music Australia, who joined the No Music on a Dead Planet campaign. They're a very similar group to us, based in Australia, and they really had a huge response from artists ahead of the last election. The last election went in a great way towards the party that was supporting the, the most ambitious climate change. So hopefully what we do played a small part in that. Um, so what do, you, do we think the results are of our work up until this point? So we've changed the face of music and climate action. Before we launched, there really wasn't any movement around climate action um, in the music industry. There were, there were amazing companies like Julie's Bicycle, um, organisations, and I should say they're a charity, Julie's Bicycle, a greener festival, sustainability charities, um, and organisations working with clients and working with people to um, improve their footprint, to become more sustainable, but there wasn't a big public messaging campaign. Now that's the, the unique thing about the music industry is that we have the huge opportunity to use the just massive influence of the industry um, to do something more than just sustainability. So that's to use that platform to share a really incredibly important message. And I can't say enough how important that message is with really there's a tiny amount of time to get the public and our governments and big companies on board with the level of change that we need to make. And anything that can really help push in that direction needs to be harnessed right now. If there's any time to do it, it's now. If you're looking at doing it in 10 years time, it's probably not gonna say too late, but you've missed the real prime opportunity to make that message clear. So um, I think, some of the results of what we've done is really creating a movement within the music industry, obviously spreading internationally. I think in the UK, people have heard of us, they respect what we do, and people come to us with loads of ideas. And it's really helping to spread those ideas around, make them happen and really bring people together and give artists an opportunity to speak out within the safety of a movement, within that. Um, community of other artists um, and the industry alike. So I think we've really changed the dial in the UK um, and yeah, really just started catalyzing this movement from just a sustainability standpoint, which we obviously support is very important, but really pushing that into a communication standpoint as well. So that's really important. I think we've done that really well. What advice would I give to um, a territory like Poland where the conversation is at a way more undeveloped level? So I think climate messaging is best when it's simple. It's best when it doesn't make people feel bad because we see a cigarette packet, it tells us we're bad. I don't know if you have that in Poland, but in England we have all sorts of images and texts saying don't smoke because of this, that and the other. It doesn't work, people still smoke. What you need to do is make give people a positive solution, something beautiful to aim for. Imagine if on a pack of cigarettes, I'm going to keep going with this analogy, there was a picture of someone running and being super he healthy in the um, outdoors. Maybe they've got a great glow to their skin. I think that would be more encouraging for people to stop smoking. So excuse that analogy, but it's about making a clear path towards something that can be positive. Now, I'm not an expert in how things are in Poland. Um, I've been to Poland, I played in a band and I went to an amazing festival called Off Festival there and the lineup was incredible. So thank you, Poland, for having me. Um, but that's all I know. I think every group in their own territory will know the exact language and the exact things people need to hear to make a difference in that territory, which is why we don't do one big central messaging campaign. I think the best thing to do is really get behind Music Declares Emergency Poland, really support them. It's not easy to set up these things. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort and anything you can do, like 
funding or support or social help with social media, which is always a big thing. Anything like that is gonna be brilliant if you can lend a hand to MDU Poland and really support them. Um, same goes for all of the other international groups, um, of course. And what, where does the conversation start? Yeah, keep it simple, keep it positive, and think of something that might be achievable and really direct people to thinking about a world that is full of love, is full of music, and is full of all the things that we want because we constantly have the news and all of these negative inputs that make us feel small and helpless. Music's there to do the opposite, and we can do that um, with music, with this massive issue facing the whole world um, in a way that makes people feel engaged and hopeful and like wanting to take action um, without terrifying everyone. We've, we all, we've all seen the polar ice caps melting and the forest fires and all of this stuff. And it's incredibly important to know about that, but we need positivity as well and simple steps forward for people. So, um, so yeah, brilliant. It's I'm really, really excited that MDU Poland is launching. Um, and thank you all for watching this. And thank you for... Thank you, Fai. <laughs> um, ja też tak naprawdę... I can see that some of the audience doesn't speak Polish, so my speech before probably should have been translated, ale też państwo oglądali film po angielsku i chyba jakby dla wszystkich było to zrozumiałe. So I'll basically try to uh, mix the both. Um, akurat tak się składa, że trzy czwarte polskiego oddziału Music Declares Emergency jest w tej sali. The three fourth of the Polish chapter, uh, the founding members is in this room. One is Misia Bieńko, która również gra ze mną w zespole. Uh, the other one is Daria Głowacka. Uh, I to, co Faj powiedziała um, o odpowiedzialności, jakby, ale jakby przetłumaczonej na nasz lokalny rynek, to jest właśnie to, nad czym my będziemy pracować w najbliższych tygodniach i miesiącach, bo te rekomendacje, które są um, stworzone na potrzeby rynku brytyjskiego, one nie do końca przystają oczywiście do polskich realiów. Uh, I'm saying that the Polish reality is very different to the um, uh, reality in the UK in terms of where the conversation is, what Fai was basically saying. Uh, and that our work in the next weeks and months will be exactly that, adjusting the recommendations, the documents, um, so that we find the positive examples and positive recommendations that people can actually use for their, for their work. Mm, yes, tak uh, jest. We have one more song to play, so I think that's uh, the, the tune, the tune for that. Ale też chciałabym, żeby odbył się taki symboliczny moment przecięcia wstęgi, który będzie niesymboliczny, e, ponieważ mamy coś do przecięcia. We're going to officially open the, um, the chapter by doing an opening moment. If I can ask you ladies to come on stage. Tak, ja bym chciała jeszcze powiedzieć, że zapraszamy do naszego stoiska i tam są różne materiały informacyjne, kody QR do zeskanowania e, i naklejki, tatuaże zmywalne, różne gadżety, możemy porozmawiać i zachęcam też do oznaczania nas w mediach społecznościowych, bo mamy już profil i mamy stronę internetową, na której można podpisywać deklaracje i bardzo zachęcamy do tego, żeby do nas dołączyć. Dokładnie, też, też jesteśmy tutaj przez cały czas, więc zachęcamy, żeby z nami rozmawiać po prostu. E, I te rekomendacje, o których mówiłam, my jesteśmy w jakby teraz w trakcie przygotowywania ich, dostosowywania ich i, i tak dalej. I one będą też właśnie na stronie internetowej, także sprawdzajcie nasze media społecznościowe i stronę internetową.